Lafonso Ellis was on pace to become an NBA All-Star before injuries derailed his career, going down as one of the many what-ifs he was healthy in NBA history. Because Ellis had entered the league as a top 5 pick and looked the part, providing energy on defense, blocking shots, and grabbing rebounds relying on his athleticism, while also having an offensive game based on getting out in the break for high-flying dunks and facing up people in the post to get around slower defenders, on top of having a mid-range shot in his arsenal. And when Lafonso Ellis was clicking, he had helped the Nuggets become the first team in NBA history to feed a 1 seed as an 8 seed, being the leading scorer for the Nuggets over that playoff run. Then knee injuries struck, but he would initially bounce back to become a 20 point per game scorer, leading the Nuggets after developing a 3 ball before rupturing an Achilles never seeming to reach his all-star potential afterwards, bouncing around to end his career as he was dealing with a sport hernia as well joining the unfortunate group of what-ifs in NBA history. This is a look back on Lafonso Ellis' career. Lafonso Ellis was born and raised in East St. Louis, Illinois, where he picked up the game of basketball and excelled, attending East St. Louis Lincoln High School, and while at ESL Lincoln, he would dominate the competition. Ellis would help lead the school to two Illinois Class 2A state championships, becoming heavily recruited being a McDonald's All-American and Parade All-American, with Ellis ultimately deciding to attend Notre Dame to play for legendary head coach Digger Phelps. Lafonso Ellis was joining a Notre Dame team that was regularly making the NCAA tournament, and despite being a freshman on a talented team, he would become a starter, earning the role as he was defensively ready. Lafonso Ellis went on to be Notre Dame's second leading scorer as well at 13.5 points while leading the team in rebounds and blocks at 9.4 rebounds and 2 blocks per game. Ellis' solid freshman year helped Notre Dame clinch another NCAA tournament appearance as a 9 seed after going 21-9. Round 1, Lafonso Ellis carried the Fighting Irish to a lopsided victory leading the way with 19 points, 3 blocks, and 18 rebounds. Round 2 brought the one seeded Georgetown Hoyos, who were a deep and talented team with Alonzo Mourning, Charles Smith, and Dikembe Mutombo. However, Notre Dame would jump out on them being ahead at half thanks to Ellis before Charles Smith and Georgetown kicked it into another year in the second half, winning the game despite Ellis' best efforts with 18 points and 10 rebounds. Lafonso Ellis entering his sophomore year continued to develop, taking on a larger role to average 14 points, 1.7 blocks, and 12.6 rebounds guiding Notre Dame to a 16-13 season after playing tough for competition this year, making the NCAA tournament as a 10 seed, in large parts due to upsetting 4th-ranked Syracuse and 3rd-ranked Missouri at the end of the year. Yet, the Fighting Irish would not last very long in the dance, getting sent home round one by Bryant Stith, John Crotty, and Virginia as they managed to hold Ellis to 9 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks. Lafonso Ellis' junior year kept stepping up his game, averaging 16.4 points, 1.6 blocks, and 10.5 rebounds, but unfortunately he only went for 15 games battling injury. And with Ellis missing significant time, Notre Dame struggled, going 12-20 and 20, missing the NCAA tournament. After the tough year, Digger Phelps decided to retire from coaching, with Notre Dame bringing a new head coach in John McLeod. Fortunately for McLeod, Ellis returned for his senior year and was fully healthy. Lafonso Ellis went on to average 17.7 points, 2.6 blocks, and 11.7 rebounds, while shooting 63.5% from the field. Helping Notre Dame go 18-15, yet just missed out on the tournament even though Notre Dame had beaten 5 top 25 teams this year. Notre Dame would partake in the NIT as a result, and they would look strong behind Ellis, who would take them all the way to the championship game before falling in overtime to Bryant Stith and Virginia, ending Ellis' time at Notre Dame, with Lafonso Ellis leaving as one of its better players in program history, especially on the defensive side of the ball, being Notre Dame's all-time leader in block shots at 200. Entering the NBA draft, Ellis was highly sought after as a prospect after putting together a strong four years at Notre Dame, showcasing his athleticism and speed for his size making him a good defender, while expanding his offensive game becoming an efficient shooter who could score inside and stretch the floor at the power forward position into the mid-range. In the 1992 NBA draft, with the fifth overall pick, Lafonso Ellis was selected by the Denver Nuggets. Ellis was joining a middle-of-the-line Nuggets team that was young and forming behind Dikembe Mutombo, Mahmoud Abdul-Raouf, Reggie Williams, fellow draft pick and Bryant Stith, and Robert Pack. Ellis was brought into the perfect situation to earn playing time right away, becoming the Nuggets' starting power forward, going on to average 14.7 points, 9.1 rebounds, and 1.4 blocks, picking up all rookie first-team honors for his efforts, as the Nuggets were steadily improving going 36-46 but missed the playoffs. 
The following season, Lafonso Ellis continued to build off his strong rookie year, averaging 15.4 points and 8.6 rebounds. With the Nuggets being on the up and up as well, as Stith was fully healthy this season, and the team had a well-balanced offensive attack while being anchored on defense by Matumbo, helping the Nuggets go 42-40, and barely making it into the playoffs to the 8th seed. To face the one-seeded Seattle Supersonics, who were a deep and talented team with Sean Kemp, Gary Payton, Detlef Shrimp, Kendall Gill, Sam Perkins, and Ricky Pierce. The Sonics, to no surprise of anyone, jumped out in commanding fashion to a 2-0 series lead, looking as though they were going to sweep the Nuggets out of the playoffs, even though Ellis went for a game-high 18 points and 10 rebounds game two. The series shifting to Denver took a turn game three, as the Nuggets rode Reggie Williams and Matumbo to a victory, giving them confidence. The Sonics game four were in a dogfight with the rejuvenated Nuggets going back and forth, but held the lead late, looking like they were going to finish the Nuggets off before Robert Pack came through hitting a game-tying three forcing overtime, where the Nuggets rode Lafonso Ellis to victory, tying the series up with Ellis finishing the game with a game-high 27 points and 17 rebounds, forcing a game five back in Seattle. Game 5 was another nail-biter as the Nuggets matched everything the Sonics threw at them. The Nuggets almost went on to win in regulation if it was not for a late basket from Gil to force overtime. In like the prior games in overtime, the Nuggets separated themselves, stunning the one-seeded Sonics round 1, making the Nuggets the first 8 seed in history to defeat a one-seed round 1. Round 2, the Nuggets got a matchup against the Utah Jazz, headed by John Stockton, Karl Malone, and Jeff Hornacek. The magic seemed to run out for the Nuggets as they quickly found themselves in a 3-0 hole, even with Ellis' best efforts as he had gone for 25 points and 9 rebounds game 3. Just like the series against the Sonics, the Nuggets had their backs against the wall looking out of it. Then they managed to rally, winning the next 3 games to tie up the series, forcing a Game 7 as Matumbo and Williams led the team. However, Game 7 was different this series as Karl Malone guided the Jazz to a victory, sending the Nuggets home. Lafonso Ellis was a large part of the Nuggets' Cinderella story this postseason, being the Nuggets' leading scorer over the playoffs with 14.8 points and second in rebounding at 8.1. The Nuggets had a new elevated expectations entering next year after the strong postseason showing, and had added Dale Ellis in free agency and drafted Jalen Rose to bolster the playoff run, with Lafonso Ellis being a focal point for the team. But as everything seemed right, Lafonso Ellis picked up a knee injury resulting in him missing all but 6 games on the year, as he averaged 4 points and 2.8 rebounds in them. With Ellis injured, the Nuggets did not seem to meet expectations, but still remain somewhat afloat thanks to the emergence of Rodney Rogers filling his role, and the offseason additions going 41-41 and making it back into the playoffs to the 8th seed. This year there wouldn't be any upset, as David Robinson and the Spurs swept them out of the playoffs 3-0, with the Nuggets seeming to miss Ellis' presence. After the disappointing year, the Nuggets made some moves in the offseason to improve the team, trading away Rodney Rogers in a pick for Antonio McDyess as Lafonso Ellis was due to return, and had sent away backup point guard Robert Pack in a separate deal to free up Dale Ellis more. The Nuggets had high hopes again before it would all come crumbling down again. First of which, Lafonso Ellis' knee was still causing problems for him, being able to only suit up for 45 games, not quite looking at his prior form, averaging 10.5 points and 7.2 rebounds when healthy. The other reason for the Nuggets falling flat was Mahmoud abdul Rauf was missing time after his controversy of not standing for the national anthem. With Ellis and abdul Rauf missing time, about half the season each, the Nuggets were no longer a playoff contender, going 35-47 and 47, missing the playoffs. Seeing the writing on the wall in the offseason, the Nuggets would lose its franchise player in Dikembe Mutombo after not meeting his contract demands, and the team seeming to be moving in the wrong direction. Things do not stop there as the Nuggets parted ways with its now controversial guard Mahmoud abdul Rauf trading him away. Needing a new point guard after, the Nuggets would trade away Jalen Rose and Reggie Williams to the Pacers for Mark Jackson. Lafonso Ellis was coming back from injury to rejoin a completely new Nuggets team but he was coming back stronger than ever, adding a three-point shot to his game after losing some explosiveness. To see Ellis become the leading scorer for the Nuggets, averaging 21.9 points per game and seven rebounds. Then the injury bug came again for Lafonso Ellis, rupturing his Achilles tendon 55 games in, in a disappointing end to his career year, looking as though he was building to becoming an NBA All-Star. The Nuggets were already bad prior to losing Ellis, even trading away Mark Jackson mid-year after the lack of team success. 
But once Ellis was out the rest of the season, the Nuggets really struggled, going 21-61, and 61, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, the Nuggets knew they were not going to be competing, so they traded away the aging Dale Ellis, and would trade away Antonio McDice after not being able to reach a contract extension, fearing they'd lose him in free agency. Lafonso Ellis was returning from injury this time to a whole new Nuggets team again that did not look like it had a shot at competing. Ellis again was the Nuggets' best player, but that was not saying much as the roster was poor and it was clear the injuries were taking their toll as Lafonso Ellis went on to average 14.3 points and 7.2 rebounds for a Nuggets team that would be abysmal going 11-71 missing the playoffs. In the offseason, Lafonso Ellis is a free agent and would decide to sign a two-year deal with the Atlanta Hawks to get a fresh start and be a part of some winning basketball. Lafonso Ellis was joining a Hawks team looking to make a run in the playoffs behind Dikembe Mutombo, Mookie Blaylock, and Steve Smith. With Ellis stepping in to be the team's power forward, complementing the Hawks trio, Lafonso Ellis in his new role went on to average 10.2 points and 5.5 rebounds. However, again, Ellis picked up an injury 20 games in with a sports hernia, ending his season. The Hawks without Ellis the rest of the season remain solid, going 31-19 in the lockout shortened year, making the playoffs the four seed. The Hawks in the playoffs would get the best of Grant Hill and the Detroit Pistons round one as they relied on their defense, before being swept by the eight-seeded Knicks as the entire starting lineup for the Hawks went ice cold from the floor over the series. In the offseason, the Hawks would decide to shake things up after the embarrassing series, trading away Steve Smith for Isaiah Ryder and Jim Jackson, and had traded away Mookie Blaylock, with the main return being Jason Terry. Lafonso Ellis returned for his second year with the Hawks to play in 58 games in a smaller role off the bench to average 8.4 points and 5 rebounds. All the while, the Hawks were no longer a competitor after the offseason moves, going 28-54 and 54, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, Lafonso Ellis was a free agent and decided to sign a one-year deal with the Minnesota Timberwolves, who were a playoff caliber team led by Kevin Garnett, Terrell Brandon, Wally Zerbiak, and Chauncey Billups. Ellis' role for the Wolves would be the backup power forward to Garnett in the team's sixth man, and Lafonso Ellis would do the improbable this season, managing to go for all 82 games, averaging 9.4 points and 6 rebounds, providing a much-needed spark off the bench. As the Timberwolves finished the year 47 and 35, barely making it into the playoffs, the eight seed. The playoffs brought a series against Tim Duncan, David Robinson, and the San Antonio Spurs, where it's no surprise the duo for the Spurs picked apart the Timberwolves, defeating them handily three games to one. Over the series, Lafonso Ellis saw his role shrunk as the Timberwolves rode Kevin Garnett for longer stretches, with Ellis averaging six points and 3.5 rebounds. In the offseason as a free agent, Lafonso Ellis was on the move again, signing with the Miami Heat. Ellis was joining a Heat team headed by the duo of Eddie Jones and Alonzo Mourning. Lafonso Ellis became the team's backup power forward to Brian Grant, where Ellis again earned six-man minutes, averaging 7.1 points and 4.3 rebounds, but he would be bothered by a sports hernia again, playing in 66 games. In the meantime, the Heat struggled to duplicate their prior season success, going 36-46, and 46, missing the playoffs. Over the offseason, the Heat would lose Alonzo Mourning in free agency, but a small consolation was they drafted well, taking Karan Butler. Lafonso Ellis this season continued to battle his sports hernia, going for 55 games, averaging 5 points and 2.9 rebounds, and the Heat all the while after losing Mourning continued their fall from grace, going 25-57, and 57, missing the playoffs. After another injury-riddled season, Lafonso Ellis decided to call it a career. Lafonso Ellis, over 11 years in the NBA, averaged 11.9 points and 6.5 rebounds. In retirement, Ellis became a sports analyst, working with ESPN for several years before recently joining the Big Ten Network and Fox. Lafonso Ellis' career will be remembered as a big what-if, as Lafonso Ellis was explosive and had a developing offensive game and looked to be the face of the franchise for the Nuggets after leading them in the playoffs and scoring, as they became the first team in history to defeat a one-seed as the A-seed. Then knee injuries would start to derail his career, but he would come back initially to become the team's leading scorer, providing hope for a struggling rebuilding Nuggets team. All before again, seeing more serious injuries occur in a ruptured Achilles, which he could never quite seem to duplicate his old form that had him looking on the path to becoming an NBA All-Star and a player who could have been in the league for multiple years. 
ending his career bouncing around dealing with a sports hernia, joining teams at the wrong time as they were trending downward and missing the playoffs. Though one could focus and remember Ellis for all the bads and what ifs, I prefer to remember Lafonso Ellis as an electric, athletic player guiding the Nuggets through the playoffs. Thanks for watching this video on Lafonso Ellis' career. If you want to see any other videos about any other random players, leave them in the comments below and I may or may not decide to do them. Who knows? Thanks again for watching. This has been Skid Denver.